Hello, I am Margaret Pabonich, and I am a Dermatology Certified Nurse Practitioner. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Donna Colton from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Dr. Colton is a leading expert in blistering diseases. Dr. Colton, diagnosing bullous pemphigoid has notoriously been a challenge for any dermatology clinicians. So can you provide us with some kind of insight or suggestion or some clinical pearls in what we can do to better diagnose it and maybe recognize it earlier? Yeah, so bullous pemphigoid is the most common um, autoimmune condition, uh, blistering condition that we see, and particularly affects elderly patients. So I think we all know that, but sometimes we forget that any elderly patient um, is at risk for bullous pemphigoid. Um, what I think we're realizing now and more and more cases being reported are, are forms of non-bullous pemphigoid. And so what we used to think of as more of an urticarial phase or an eczematous phase that would happen before a patient actually developed blisters, we're now realizing may not be a phase at all. It may be the way that these patients actually make their pemphigoid. And so I, one of the pearls that I would say now is if an elderly patient comes with any new eruption that is terribly pyritic and new onset, especially if it's not responding well to topical treatments, you need to be thinking about non-bullous pemphigoid in this patient population. Thankfully, the, the diagnosis is made um, the same way we would make a diagnosis of bullous pemphigoid, except for that we don't rely as heavily on the biopsy for H&E because, of course, it probably won't show a subepithelial split. So instead, we rely pretty heavily on the biopsy for direct immunofluorescence. Um, that, of course, those studies can be supplemented by uh, indirect immunofluorescence or ELISA, which are both serological studies that look for circulating autoantibodies. Dr. Colton, bullous pemphigoid is not a common disease, but it's certainly a skin condition that we do see in dermatology and one that's been very difficult to recognize. Not only recognize it early, but to diagnose it. What are some of the best ways that we as dermatology clinicians can, one, recognize it early in the disease state, and two, how can we recognize some of the more uncommon forms of bullous pemphigoid? Yeah, so in terms of recognizing BP earlier, again, I think it's to consider it earlier in your differential diagnosis. So as you're seeing a patient, um, again, we all think of it when we see blisters, um, but to think of it earlier for patients, uh, again, if they're not responding to topical treatments, to really be thinking about recognizing the, you know, the non-blistering variants um, that, that may, again, trick us because they present like eczematous dermatitis or parigonodularis um, or even urticaria. So historically, we've talked about and thought about drug-induced bullous pemphigoid. Uh, and I would say, even though it's been reported in reality, we don't see it very often. And, and more typically, we're seeing idiopathic um, bullous pemphigoid or non-bullous pemphigoid in, in our elderly patients. But there are two drugs that uh, are worth mentioning um, because I've even occasionally missed them, not realizing that my patient's drug list is not up to date. Um, one is the checkpoint inhibitors, which of course, uh, if you have a patient on a checkpoint inhibitor, you're probably, they're aware that there are cutaneous, um, you know, immune related adverse events. And so that can be a variety of different things, but pemphigoid is certainly one of the presentations of one of these uh, cutaneous adverse events that happen after a checkpoint inhibitor. Um, so, so keep in mind that if you have a patient that comes again with a, a new eruption after a checkpoint inhibitor, pemphigoid should certainly be on your, on your list. Um, and it, it is the most common cutaneous immune-related adverse event um, following checkpoint inhibitors. So be on the lookout for that and certainly consider it even if you're not seeing blisters in those patients. Um, the second one, the second class of medicines to think about are the glyptins. And these are um, medications used to treat diabetes. And, and, and there are a variety of ones available um, out there on the market. Uh, but we, we see this quite often um, where a patient is put on a new medication in the glyptin family and then develops pemphigoid um, some period of time later. 
Uh, this is actually one of the medications that we're still gathering data, but it appears that potentially if you stop the medication, the patient patient's pemphigoid will improve spontaneously um, off once they're off of that medication. So it doesn't mean we don't treat the patient um, while we're discontinuing the glyptin, but it certainly means that um, they may actually be able to taper off their treatment um, and, and go back to living without any pemphigoid as long as they stay off that medication. It, there have been plenty of studies that have shown other diabetic medications, um, medications used to treat diabetes do not have the same response. So our same risk, I should say. So it really is limited to the, the glyptin family. While diagnosing bullous pemphigoid can be a challenge for dermatology clinicians. We forget how difficult it can be for patients with bullous pemphigoid. And when we talk about the unmet needs of our patients with BP, what are they and how can we address them? So certainly I think any of us who have seen patients with bullous pemphigoid or non-bullous pemphigoid realize that, again, this is a, a medically fragile patient population often, may elderly patients with plenty of comorbidities, they're on many other medications. Um, oftentimes they have, you know, a, a, a life full of doctor's visits and a lot of moving parts. They rely on family members to get them um, to their doctor's appointments and the lab monitoring that comes. These are all, we, we just don't have really great treatment. So these are all big problems for this patient population in terms of being compliant with our treatment. I think back to some of the medications that we use, all are typically immunosuppressive. I would say the vast majority are immunosuppressive medications that require lab monitoring, um, which again, a big burden for patients to coordinate and for you and your um, practice to coordinate, right? I, I have still patients that I have to keep a list of when they're due for their, their blood work monitoring. Um, it's a lot to keep up with. And then certainly, they're, they're more at risk for having uh, changes to their, you know, kidneys or liver, things that, again, may be multifactorial. So, so a big burden on the patient to keep up with some of the treatments and then, again, putting them at higher risk for infection, given that, that our treatments that we have available now are in mostly immunosuppressive. Dr. Colton, I'm so excited that we now have the first FDA-approved drug for bolus pemphigoid. Can you tell us more about that? So there uh, have been some clinical trials looking at new, safer medications to treat bullous pemphigoid or non-bullous pemphigoid. Um, we are the the one that um, most recently had released its its um, first analysis of its data and met all of its endpoints is the dupilumab um, in the treatment of bullous pemphigoid. Uh, and again, the the data suggests that um, the study met all of its its uh, endpoints and it's going to be a huge breakthrough and really a game changer for how we treat this disease. So most dermatologists are already very comfortable um, using dupilumab in, um, in their patients for a variety of conditions for which it's already approved. Um, again, I when I'm talking to patients about the safety of this drug, which I think is really one of the, the most exciting things, is that it's approved down to six months of age in other conditions. And so to be using it in an elderly patient population, it's really amazing to see that it has it has just the same uh, safety profile in older patients. Um, and we can feel really safe uh, using it in our in our medically complex uh, elderly bullous pemphigoid patients.